All right, I'm gonna cover two things in this video. The first is going to be how to, this is a, an R985 Pratt & Whitney engine and how to adjust the valve clearance. Um, so here, uh, one, one thing to note is if you, you notice the valve covers are, have this dog bone in between them for the oil to drain through, um, it's better to take these things off in pairs um, that way you don't have to take all this stuff loose. You just pull the screws out of both and pull them off. That does get you, um, if you look, the dog bones are between cylinders. So you've got to adjust one clearance and then turn around, put the uh, other cylinder on top dead center and then do it. And then as you move down, this one will already be on top dead center because you just did the one above it. And so now we can go ahead and set this clearance. Then you have to turn the prop again to get on top dead center for the next one and continue all the way around. So to do it, once you get the cylinder on top dead center, um, you loosen this outside lock nut um, that's here. Um, and then you turn the screw to 10,000 clearance. Um, it's 10,000 period. There's no range. Um, so it's really best to just, if you're going to do this, go ahead and loosen up the thing and set each one just to make sure that they're right. I've been checking them as I go, and um, I have, th this one, for example, was 27 thousandths off. Um, so it was set at 27 thousandths instead of 10 thousandths. So um, it, a lot of them were a lot higher than they should have been. Um, and I had one that was about uh, 2 thousandths. So it's uh it, it has been a little bit of a, a thing to, to have to go through and set them anyway so and then once you set it uh you lock your lock nut down put a screwdriver in here to hold the the setting and and torque this to 300 inch pounds um, and then recheck it to make sure that nothing changed um, so that's all it is to setting the the valve clearance um, now, on this particular cylinder last night, um, we, and, and I'll show a video of, of what that, what it looked like last night, but when you wiggled this thing, um, not only was it set to 27 thousandths here, um, but it had a lot of play in it side to side. And so we ended up having to change the, normally I guess you could change the bearing in the, in the rocker arm, but we changed the whole rocker arm. So I'm going to go through how to get this out because it was a bit of a trick um, and it's a pretty handy trick to know. Okay, so the first thing is you have to get the valve, the spring off of the valve. You can't take the spring off the valve unless you can get this rocker arm to turn all the way up to be able to get the spring out. You can't turn the rocker arm all the way up unless you get the pushrod tube out. You can't get the pushrod tube out with the rocker arm sitting here because it won't move. So you're kind of stuck. And so what we did at first is we took the pin out of the rocker arm. Once we took the pin out of the rocker arm, the rocker arm could slide forward just enough to then be able to come back here and take the two nuts off the pushrod tube, slide the pushrod tube into the head, get this end of the pushrod tube and the pushrod out, and then you could pull the pushrod tube out of the way. Once you get the pushrod tube out of the way, then you can come in here, move the, push, the, the rocker arm up, and then put the tool in here to get the valve spring out. Once you get the valve spring out, then you just pull the rocker arm out, put the new one in, and then reverse everything. So before you put the, the pin in, you put the valve spring back in, get it set, um, <coughs> then turn around and put in the uh, pushrod tube, then come back up here and put in the pin. Now, it is a, another little trick we did that worked out perfect is we actually put the compression test gauge on the cylinder and pumped it up to 80 PSI, um, and that was enough to hold the valve closed so that we could get the spring on and off. So we, we basically pumped it up to 80 and then took the spring out and then obviously unhooked it. And then once we were done putting everything back together, we pumped it up and put the, the spring back in. So it ended up working really well. We didn't need to take the cylinder off and we didn't need a hundred foot of rope to stick down in the cylinder to try to hold the valve. Um, so now you, you can also put rope in here um, and then put 
turn the prop to put, put, basically push the rope up and hold the valve um, if you don't have access to air. Um, but in our case, we had the compressor and it was worked out pretty well.